Gamers, today we're going to be making another guide, this time for Japanese two town centers that's become very, very popular recently. So I'm here to create a guide to show you guys how to do it. And uh, this is part of the subathon where one of the sub goals was for Twitch chat to pick a second guide because I already have six guides for every single sim, uh, all the new ones. And then now this is the second guide for the Japanese. And this is also the reason if you're maybe missed my other YouTube videos, this is also why I got this through the middle is because it was part of the sub goal and I'm going bold soon, baby. So, that being said, I know it might be hard to take me serious and maybe listen to me and, and actually be like, mm, does this guy know what he's talking about with this hair? But trust me, other than the hair, I know what I'm talking about, all right? So, this is going to be a two town center Japanese uh, into mass samurai and ona bugeishas, which are also called Bugattis these days. Trust me, bro. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to start with three villagers on food, three villagers on stone. Uh, similar to how HRE starts with three villagers on food, three villagers on gold. So th there's been two TC builds with Japanese that people have been trying. The problem is every time you go for a second TC, it's always awkward to get the stone for Daimyo and the second TC. Because you gotta mine a lot of stone. So I don't know who started this, but someone uh, uh, figured out. I think the first two people that I've seen do it were Vortex and Demu, uh, but I don't know if it's theirs uh, or not, but those are the first two players that I've seen do it, so shout out to them. But uh, basically, the way that people are thinking about it, if I'm going to mine all this stone, uh, if you need 350 for TC and 300 for Daimyo, you might as well just mine it immediately and get gold through that, because you only need 100 gold through, for Ajap, which is 500 stone. Japanese gets 20% of the stone into gold and 20% of the gold into stone when you're mining. So then people figured out, okay, if I'm gonna need 650 stone total, I might as well uh, just start mining stone immediately. The age up is actually not that delayed and the TC is instant when you go into feudal. So, perfect map fits the hair, okay. Okay, this is a coincidence. This was not intended, but yes, the map does fit my hair. So you're gonna start with three on stone, three on food. You're gonna go one on the berries to build a house, and you're just gonna leave that guy there. You wanna build your houses, like the next house I think I'll build here, just to have it around berries, because those are your mills. Now, I'm gonna put the villager count. Now the next villager, so right now I'm gonna have four on food, three on stone. The next villager will go on stone as well, because you need actually quite a lot of stone. You might think you're going to overmine or have too much, but you're actually going to need five villagers total on stone. So, um, and you're going to leave the five villagers on stone until you get 650 stone total, okay? I know that's a lot of stone, but that's the, the amount of stone you need. So you can see I have 100 stone and 20 extra gold. Uh, meanwhile, obviously, I'm getting sheep, I'm scouting, and now I'm just going to rally to the food. So the way the timing works out is I'm going to get um, enough gold to age up when I have around 400 food. And then once I start aging up, I'm going to pull the villagers to um, wood because I want to get uh, 400 wood for a town center. So I'm going to speed up here. You can see the stone is... We're nowhere close to it. We need 650, so... Again, I know it might sound like, oh, this might look like I'm going to have way too much stone. You you want. It's all good. Yo, now, uh, you don't want to get Tawara, which is a, bill, a wheelbarrow, because it will actually delay your age up, and you don't want that. So even though you have resources for it, don't get it. So, now I have 300 stone, and I'm getting Daimyo. Now, there is no reason not to do this. Uh, for two... For... Um, Two reasons. Number one, you're going to do it anyway eventually, um, right? So you might as well just do it now. And number two, it will give you an extra attack on your town center. So maybe if the enemy scouts passes by or something, you know, sometimes scouts survives on one HP or, you know, one hit. Well, now you're going to have two attacks from TC, so maybe the scouts are going to go down easier. So as you can see, I'm still getting the, the Daimyo. By the way, one important thing is... Once the daimyo finishes, don't queue up villagers behind it because the 
villager that you get that's instantly made if i have another villager queued here that villager would start producing and then a daimyo instant villager would be here so you would have to wait for the next one so what you want to do is let the daimyo finish villager pops and then make a villager okay i know this might not seem like a big deal it is because you get a villager basically instantly like you haven't missed a beat uh, so you can see now tc is shooting two arrows uh so it's a lot a lot better and can pick up the, the scouts now we're almost at the age up you can see right here boom and look at that perfect right there 450 food 200 gold and i'm going to make kura storehouse now uh kura storehouse is something you will always want to go you do not want to go for kaka township for the shinobis because this build is is not it okay so kura storehouse right here now you want to age up with four i messed up in this game you do want to age up with four villagers and then you're going to put all the villagers except four on food you will put on wood so right now you want to be aging up with four you want to put four on food and the rest goes on the wood and you will stop mining stone when you have exactly 350 after upgrading daimyo okay after upgrading daimyo you're gonna stop mining stone at 350. so here we go 360 boom i stop i redirect now one important thing is you do not do not do not want to make a lumber camp okay what you need to do is you need to chop the three straggler trees and it's very important you don't destroy them with buildings or, or a kura storehouse or something the reason for that is if you chop the three trees you will have 450 wood at this point which would mean that you can put it down center and you can make a lumber camp after so here we go so yeah now i put four i'm like oh shit yeah i'm supposed to have four so you can see i'm chopping the wood with all these guys and this is going to give you the fastest possible uh town center timing realistically mine should have been five six seven five six seven seconds faster because of uh only edging up with three but yeah so now we're dropping off all the wood is chopped and look at that 450 so i can make a tc and a lumber camp now important thing to note is you want the TC on your first gold. Now I've experimented with this. I've tried placing the TC at different locations. I've watched people play this build and putting TCs at different locations. And I found that if the enemy just pushes your gold instantly and you don't have a TC there, you are not gonna be getting that gold at all. So you need to put a TC there, the second one, to protect your gold, to be able to actually mine the gold. Uh, otherwise you're gonna have to make a tower or something and that's just gonna delay everything um now if you have like deer let's say here and you put a tc on this side and then you get deer and, and and gold that'd be pretty good but in general just place it on the gold even though i have deer right here your food uh eco is not priority it's securing the gold because you're also getting free farms remember that and a lot of your eco as japanese come from uh the farming uh, that you have So here we go because I have daimyo I instantly put a villager on the new farm and then we have four five on food right now The worker split I'm gonna show you in a second So I like to build a TC with eight and I'm going to rally all those eight onto the gold Why eight it might seem like a lot It is a lot, but this is what you got to do. You got to get wheelbarrow one, wheelbarrow two, double broad axe, mining specialization, iron under mash, Tatara, the second upgrade for melee. And then you got to make units that also cost gold. And then you got to make a bannerman. So trust me, you'll be using that gold for sure. On woodline, we want to have between eight and 10 villagers. I like to keep eight, exactly. Um, eight villagers is a good amount. And what that's going to give you is uh, slowly producing barracks like adding a barracks then adding a barracks over time and once you're done with making barracks you can start making walls around your base and then once you are walled in you're gonna use that extra wood that you have to make more farms around your tc i know that this is not something that other civs do but with japanese because of daimyo uh the farms are quite quite good and you're simply not gonna need wood anymore so 
The second farm is there, I put a villager, gold, DC is done. And right now I am not really harassable. I'm scouting my opponent what he's doing. Even if there was units coming from here, I would just do a wall like this, maybe go on this wood line and be completely fine. And this is one of the better maps, by the way, to do this build on, but you can do this build on any map. We got the wheelbarrow coming, we got the barracks coming as well. <clears throat> and like I said, now with the extra wood, I'm just gonna be building the barracks, walls, and everything else. As far as rally points, both TCs are now rallied onto the food. So maybe if you're running out of sheep, you can just go on barracks, but you want to rally both TCs on food right now. Why? Well, because I'm getting upgrades, I'm getting production, so now I need a lot of food so I can actually produce not only villagers, but workers too. Uh, not only villagers, but units too, sorry. Workers and villagers. And Ona Bugacious are common. Now, these units, you might think they're weak. I met another Japanese guy that is 1 TC aggression, but they're actually very, very strong in numbers with upgrades. And um, the more you have, the more DPS your army has by substantial amount. And eventually you want to add Samurai when your economy is in good enough position. You want to add Samurais to be able to tank some damage, to be able to dive under TCs with Samurais and Onas and just kind of help them not die immediately because their HP and armor is basically non-existent. So we see double Broadaxe, second wheelbarrow is coming in. Could have got them. Uh, I'm getting Tatara, which is plus one melee damage. So what is your goal now? As you can see, the walling has started. Now, if you're getting all in, obviously you want to add barracks and you want to mass produce units, right? Uh, the opponent will have to dive under town centers, which is going to, you know, make it a lot easier for you to deal with that. Even if you're getting all in, remember, Onas are like horsemen. You should look at it like horsemen, like harass unit. You can always take two and run them around and harass the enemy food or the enemy gold or, or whatever you can, right? They're not very expensive. They're super fast. They cost 60-20. So you can always try to find some value with them. And if the enemy is going heavy archer comp, or just archers in general, you want to get iron undermash so that your onas and your samurais take a lot more reduced damage. Now, if my opponent is playing passive, what I would do is I would just start spamming onas. Uh, you can also make a bannerman to boost their damage, which you should always have a banner with your, with your army. And then you can put pressure on them. So if they're rushing castle, just keep making on us, try to put pressure on the gold, try to harass their food villagers. This is the thing, even if the opponent reaches castle and they are making men at arms and the men at arms have four armor or for melee and on us hit for uh, nine with all the, with bannermen and two upgrades. Even if you're hitting for five, they actually attack every 0 0.9 seconds. So their DPS is still gonna be quite high. And you're not going to be in one of those situations where you're fighting against men at arms and you have archers and you're just doing no damage, right? You're actually going to be able to deal with more expensive units just with sheer numbers and the DPS of the army. So if the opponent is playing passive, you want to put pressure on them. If the opponent is, is playing uh, aggressive and they're all inning you, if they have like villagers on deer somewhere or gold, um, just take two, three owners, just go harass, cause them some damage behind and just mass units in your base and try to defend that. Um, what would I do if Jushi went fast, uh, fast, uh, went fast castle bold build? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll I, I usually don't uh, answer like questions regarding, oh, what if opponent did this? But because Jushi's legacy, or during a guide at least, uh, but because Jushi's legacy, one of the most popular builds is rushing the uh, fast castle Shaolin monk. The Shaolin Monks will get absolutely butchered by Onas. One Ona will get destroyed, right, by the the Shaolin Monk. But if you have 10, 15 Onas, which you should by the time he, um, or, you know, right now, how many do I have? I have four and more are coming. You're actually going to be able to take down the Shaolin Monks very quickly. So the opponent should get like a relic, but after that, he should not be able to get any other. And I actually had a game recently like that. So that's why I know the first one or two Onas got then trained by the Shaolin Monk. But after, you will have like 7, 8, 9, 10, and then you can split them. And they just, again, they do so much DPS that the enemy will not be able to take the relics. 
and if Jushi Legacy went fast Shaolin Monk build, then they don't really have much else going for them. So, and then you're on 2TC and you're booming, so. Yeah. Um, so right now, I'm putting some pressure. I see Zuginor coming. You can see even against archers, you can engage against them and try to do some damage. I pick off a Zuginu, I pick off a Spearman. I'm scouting, I see a lot of units coming. I see horsemen coming. And I still spam Onas and I got Bannerman. Now one thing to note, <clears throat> Horsemen do not counter Onas, uh, Bugacious. Bugacious will kill Horsemen in cost per cost. So if the enemy is going Horsemen, just keep making Onas. If enemy is going Knights, you have to make Spearmen. Now, the reason why right now I'm not making Samurai instantly is because, uh, number one, I wouldn't be able to be active on the map. And number two, I would have like four samurai at this point, maybe five with this amount of uh, onas and four or five samurai would not be able to do much because they're also a lot slower. So you want initially onas to go across the map and do a lot of damage. And then the more farms you have, the more eco you have, especially food eco, you can switch to samurais because they're more expensive. So my goal from here on out is to just, again, now I'm using the extra wood to produce farms around my town center. Um, a little bit later, around 12 minutes, you can also rally some villagers onto stone to get the second daimyo, which is daimyo palace. Um, and the main reason you want to get second one around 12, 13, 14 minutes is because it will boost your farm gathering rate even more and you're going to have enough farms by then uh, to where that's actually going to make a difference. So right now I'm still making units, still spamming units. I actually did make some spearmen, but that was not needed at all. Um, like I said, again, against uh, horsemen, you're going to be fine. You can, it's not like the end of the world, right? You can. But especially if you're maybe lacking gold or something. Oh, I think I made a Spearman here because I was saving up gold for an age up. Uh, yeah, that's why I made Spearman, but you don't need to. Now, when do you decide to all in? When do you decide to age up? Well, if my opponent was playing greedy um, and like trying to age up or go for like 3TC, I would go all out. I would just spam Samurais and Onas and I would go all out, non-stop, five, six, seven barracks production and I would go, go, go. But because my opponent was 2TC into a mass military, like I saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine production buildings, uh, and I was kind of poking and prodding. I stopped unit production for just a tiny bit. And right now, look at my food income. It's really good. I'm on berries. I got some deer right here as well. I got some farms. I decided to age up and then get my upgrades. So, could I, I, I have just kept making units and attacking? Yes, but I thought in this game, I had enough time to just stop making units, age up. My TCs are close to each other. Um... You know, even if he pushes with that army, he wouldn't have been able to kill much. And I decided to age up. Force dropping with the gold. I'm going to age up with the floating gate, which is what you always want to age up in its current balance and, and the way it is. I'm making two forges next to it. This is something that is very popular uh, among the top players to do um, because of the relics that you will get. There are multiple places that you can go with the relics depending on what you need. In general, you always want to put them in forges because it will give you 75 gold per minute, which is almost like an actual relic. Now, um, if you have lost some villagers, for example, like let's say you lost 3-4 villagers from night harassment, it's not the worst idea to take one of the relics and put it in a town center because it will uh, boost your villager production, I think, to 17 seconds, I want to say. You can even put both relics in both TCs if you would like. Uh, but if you're two TCs and you're feeling like you're in a good spot, you're ahead, you don't need to risk it. It's better to just get more resources out. It's 16. Yeah, it's okay. It's 16 seconds, which is really good. Um, now in general, you put it in forges again, can't put it in TCs. Uh, if you're playing on like a hybrid map or, or not hybrid, but like water map, like Baltic or something, you can also put them in lumber camps to get wood. But uh, if you're, if I was getting all in right now, like 
which I am, but I have enough units and I knew that. But let's say I don't have enough units, like I fucked up and the enemy's coming and I have a bunch of resources but I only have 2-3 barracks and I, I can't manage to produce enough. What I could do is I could take both relics and put them in barracks. And if you do that, the spearman production goes from 15 seconds to 5. So the, the uh, barracks production boost is 200%. So I'm gonna age up here. You can see he's trying to kind of being aggressive. He doesn't know that I am aging up yet. And the moment he sees the age up, he will go for it. So I'm going to speed up here. So if you look, if I put in military or docks the Yurishiro, it gives 200% work rate. So if right now I am on two barracks only, and I'm like, oh shit, like I don't have wood, but I have too many resources. It's not a bad idea to just grab the relics, put one in the barracks, put the second one in the barracks, and suddenly I have six barracks out of thin air. So that's something to consider as well. Also, what you can do is if there's too many archers, you can make a siege workshop and then put the relic in the siege workshop to boost the uh, production of Mamangono by quite a bit. So yeah, you can kind of play with your heroes, but again, in general, if the game is normal, just put it in forges. He decides to go here. But again, I have TC here, I have TC that's, you know, the main TC that's also upgraded. I was trying to get a stone for the second daimyo, the daimyo palace. And you can see the TC is just doing so much work right now. I'm getting my upgrades over here. I put both uh, relics into the forges because I felt pretty safe. And he's trying to do some run buys here, trying to do some damage. He only gets two villagers, which is not a lot. Considering how much he just lost, that is not a lot. And, you know, I recover. I think I repair this farm. Yeah, I repair the farm. And he kills only two villages and all that. And now I'm going with two Shinto shrines because I am first to castle. So I want to make sure I get all the relics. Uh, my barracks are producing. I'm going to be adding more barracks very, very soon. And now, as I'm depleting my berries and as I depleted the deer, I'm going to be putting a lot of workers on wood and I'm going to start transitioning to farms more and more and more. And once you have about 40 farms, there's a second daimyo coming in, you're going to get so much farming going on, it's going to be insane. Now, one thing to note, um, I would not advise you to upgrade your second town center at all because you would rather want to have your main TC fully upgraded. Uh, another thing to note is I have, if I upgraded Daimyo here and Daimyo here, the farming effects do not stack, okay? So if there's a farm here, I will not get the 25% boost from this TC and 25% from this TC. It does not stack. So it's always better to fully upgrade one because the next one gives me 50% uh, farming rate. And if I upgraded this one, it will get an arrow, but my farming will still be 25, so, yeah. And now, what you want to do is, with all the units, you want to secure the relics. Remember, you can still uh, you can still harass your opponent with Onas. This is something that, I know it's kind of like weird because they're infantry units, but you can just run around with them, harass your opponent wherever you can, use them like a harass unit, like horsemen but also you can use them in the main fight. And the way you wanna have a main fight is you wanna have Samurai in the front, taking all the Archer damage and damage in general, and then Onas attack from behind Samurai because they have actually one tile range. So they can attack um, from, be like if Samurai's in the front line, they can be behind them and still reach the enemy units. So here we go for the engagement and these his unit comp should counter mine. But again, Onas do so much DPS and they're so fast at closing the distance, it makes it really, really hard for the opponent to kite or do anything about this. And now, back at home, I'm going to be transitioning to more farms, I'm getting relics. Look at this, four more barracks are coming in hot. I did get uh, plus three uh, melee damage. This is extremely important, by the way. I'm doing a little distraction here while I'm doing destruction. Uh, it is extremely important to get the melee upgrades with this comp and to get Bannerman at all times. If you're playing against this comp, no joke, but you should get the melee armor. 
And this is, I feel like, the only units, the only matchup where melee armor is really, really, really good because you reduce the uh, uh, DPS by Ona Bugacious quite a lot. So, right now I'm getting the relics, I'm getting the stone to get the Daimyo or Shogunate Castle, which is going to increase the farm uh, harvest rate by 75%, and you get a rocket emplacement, which at that point your TC is like immune to raiding because it will dent everything there is. So you can see around 16 minutes I'm getting the Shogunate Castle and I had um, uh, I had uh, the what's it called? Castle Palace? I forgot already. I had it at I think 12 or 13 minutes started. So that's kind of the timings that you want to try to achieve. I'm getting some uh, blacks, some um, what's it called? Some gold here, I'm gonna make a couple of towers. I have some excess stones, I'm gonna just get sprinkled upgrades. Um, and now the economy is similar, uh, 86 to 81. But if you look at incomes, uh, right now it's looking pretty good for me. Also, my farms are set up. Now, Jushin's Legacy is another sieve that can set their farms up pretty fast and pretty quickly. But most of the other sieves would be running out of food right now on the map. And once they run out of the map, uh, food on the map, I have 31 farms right now. Like, I'm done with food almost. Yeah, I can add some more farms, but I have 2.2k food per minute, right? Which is quite, quite high. So that's kind of your your good timing that the opponent has to just farms and you don't because you're already done with that. So he has a uh, veteran Zuginu, he has some crossbows, but if you look, um, one good part about playing Japanese and playing this style is it's very easy to micro. Most of these fights, I didn't micro at all. I just, right now, I split my units, I engaged, I A moved, and now I'm rallying more units. I'm constantly producing, look at that. Just 2.6k food per minute, and we're 18 minutes into the game. And now you do what you do with Onas. They're fast as fuck. You put Samurai on his units, you let them just go around tank damage. I took one Bannerman here, one Bannerman is here to boost all my units. And now look at this. You can slice up the workers so fast, you can run around, and you can cause so much damage and chaos for your opponent. And once Onas are in, it's honestly like, like horsemen, except they have way more DPS. So now I just start torching. The units are just perma, perma rallying across the map. I'm almost at 200 with all the fighting. Um, I'm trying to buy time with these owners, running them to the corner, raiding here. And it kind of feels like at this point, if you're playing Japanese, it kind of feels like you're playing HRE, where once you set up your chapel, in this case, once you set up your farms around the, the main TC, you're just non-stop producing units. And by the way, these units are very cheap on the gold, again. Um, samurai are 30 gold, 100 food. Onas are 20 gold, 60 food. So these units are super, super easy to just mass produce uh, as long as you have production to keep up. And eventually you're just gonna have enough uh, food to age up as well. And you can see my unit comp, 46 Samurai, 36 Onas right now. Um, and even with Micro, like you can't really target fire. So even if you go crossbow Zuginu, you can't really target fire. Um, so it becomes very inefficient. Now, one of the units that are very good against this Japanese army um, is, are the knights, because then you force the Japanese to make spearmen instead of onas, then reducing their uh, army DPS against some of the other stuff. But also, um, one thing that you don't really want to make is probably spearmen and men at arms against this. And the reason for that is Samurai have uh, an upgrade that gives them bonus damage against infantry. So if you go men-at-arms to fight against this Japanese army, the Samurai is already just going to slice them through. So uh, that's something to consider. Knights, like I said, are pretty good. Archer, crossbow is pretty good. And um, one advice that I can give you fighting against Japanese is get plus melee armor upgrades against this specific style. And I would suggest you to try to snipe the Bannerman with your ranged units and then move away from the Bannerman uh, range because they leave the banner on the floor. And then you can reduce their whole army's damage by 15% if they have one Bannerman. If they have like five, then obviously that's not gonna work. So that's something to consider. 
That is Japanese guide number two, which is the macro version, the two town center version. Again, I am not sure who started this. There's a lot of people testing with the, the kind of like early stone builds and stuff, but the first people I've seen it were Vortex and Demu. So again, shout out to them. That's going to be it for this YouTube video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching on YouTube. And don't worry, the demon cutie is soon going to be bald cutie. YouTube gamers, thank you for watching. Check me out tomorrow with another video or two or five. Twitch gamers, let's keep going.